Hello, everybody. Um, good afternoon from London. This is a sunny day, indeed a, a bank holiday Monday, and I'm sure that most of my colleagues are enjoying outdoors. But I honestly welcome all of you to this interesting webinar on perioperative challenges of heart transplantation. And without uh, further ado, I'm going to introduce our first speaker, who is uh, Professor Vera Dosso from Germany. She is director of the Institute of Anesthesiology and Pain Therapy at the Heart and Diabetes Center of Bad Oeynenhausen, the Ruhr University of Bochum. And uh, we will have a short uh, video about uh, this major institution. Uh, and Vera has been instrumental and a leading figure in many societies in cardiothoracic anesthesia and transplantation, a major administrative appointments and uh, academic record in peer-reviewed journals. She stands as a very active member in several societies, including the German Society of Anesthesiology, the Society of uh, Cardiovascular Anesthesiologists, the ESA, and serves on the EACTA board, member of the subcommittee of transplant and assist device and on the education community, uh, including the, uh, the Munich Lung Transplant Group, and the list goes on. Today, Vera is going to talk to us about the bridging therapy, the implantation of the total artificial hearts. Vera, thank you. Thank you, Nandy, for this kind introduction and uh, welcome everybody and also here in Ostwestfalen is uh, today a sunny day and um, it's a pleasure for me to introduce my presentation with a small interview. It's just a few minutes with uh, the leader of uh, our um, ELVAT program, it's Dr. Mihil Morsuis and with the leader of the VAT coordinators, Volker Launroth, and um, I just uh, ask them a couple of questions just to um, bring you near um, this uh, special um, technique. Please start with the um, with the interview. Yeah. How many um, assist devices did you implant uh, the last 20 years? We started our program in uh, 1990 already. So since 30 years I'm involved. And altogether, I think I implanted about 800 uh, LVETs and about 100 total artificial hearts. And what is the role of total artificial heart in the context of long-term mechanical support and transplanta heart transplantation? Of course, total artificial heart is uh, quite seldom that we implant it now because of several reasons. First of all, most patients can do with an LVET, yeah, also when they have an impaired RV function. And so with LVET, in most cases, it's possible. Sometimes they need a temporary RVET or medical support, support of, the, of the RV. But you know, the need for total artificial heart or bivet support is quite seldom. Another reason not to go for total artificial heart is the quality of life. Because the driver, that's the issue, is quite heavy and quite loud. And the adverse event rate of total artificial heart is, is also higher in comparison to LVET. And the consequence is, you know, that we only select it for really ill patients. We have a one-year survival with total artificial heart of about between 40 and 50 percent. In comparison to transplant, you know, I think transplant is the best option for every patient. And um, so total artificial heart, so as we use it, uh, especially Syncardia, is only a bridge to transplant. So we don't see it as a destination therapy. So when we implant it, we try to transplant the patient as soon as possible. Now that we have a new system, system on the market, it's quite in the beginning, it's called KAMAT. It just got CE mark, it's a few months ago. And uh, you know, it's implanted about 20 times, I would say, and the six months survival is about 73%, uh, which is quite good. The problem of the system is uh, first that um, it's quite big. That's one, one issue. And another issue is that it uh, has allowance for 180 days. It's very silent. Could you just explain um, the technical aspects um, of the system? Yes, the noise is very loud. Mm -hmm. And um, the patient is total depend on the technical part. So um, there is a need for a caregiver. So when you are living alone, you need the support for 24 hours. This is a big issue for us as a hospital when if we, we uh, implant this device. 
Uh, the noise I can uh, present you is also very loud. So, this noise have you 365 days per year, and this makes some issues with the ears. So we have the experience that a lot of uh, the patients have some troubles with the ears. Another issue is that we don't have uh, any log files. So we have only three parameters uh, which are calculated, so we can't um, find um, early detection maybe for some uh, troubles with the um, implanted uh, device or with the technical device. So we have only three parameters, the beats per minute, the cardiac output and the um, um, stroke volume from the left ventricle. If we have some troubles with the right ventricle, we don't get any uh, information from this device. What uh, kind of complications do you have? Uh, some, some things uh, uh, Michael told us uh, about strokes, bleeding, uh, these are the, the, the main uh, issues and complications which we are, uh, see uh, in the supporting time. You can measure the blood pressure, but we can't get information from the device. This is a big technical problem in my opinion. And uh, regarding the, the implantation, just can you just explain um, what are you doing first? Well, you get uh, very good flows with low filling pressure. So the, the organ perfusion with this system is, is really good. It's, it's a little bit like transplant. So you excise the heart, not on the atrial level, but on the ventricular, ventricular level. Then you use the, the annulus of the trigger speed and of the mitral valve to fixate this cuff you know, with a yeah. running suture. Then you put this, this ventricle on, on the cuff. Very, very easy, in fact, you know. And this is the outflow graft, you know, you, you anastomose it. This is the left side, you see it on the red band. To, to the ascending aorta, that's a de-airing port. So you can de-air the ventricle uh, very carefully. And then you can, you can just start it. It's a compressor, you know, and it just puts the, the air in. And there's a polyurethane membrane in between and the blood is, is, is pushed out. Then the, the air is taken out again, so the ventricle fills again. Mm -hmm. There are two valves, yeah, so metronic hole valves. Mihil, what do you expect from the anesthesiologist? It's, it's very important to speak, uh, so before the operation with the anesthesiologist, yeah, to, to make a plan for, for the induction of the anesthesia, the surgeon should be in the room, the coagulation issues you have after this operation. Then you have to, have to adapt blood pressure, you have to see, uh, to look at afterload uh, because yeah. sometimes they are really hyper, hypertonic. Okay, yep. thank you very much. Okay, this was only just a short introduction for what was we are doing here in Bad Oeynhausen and I just uh, want to continue with some important landmarks in the journey of the total artificial heart. So just to keep in mind since uh